Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 250 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Welcome. It's a celebration. I'm excited to be here. We're streaming. Can you can you turn your stream off? Keelan's bloody playing the, playing the shit on his laptop and on his phone at the same time, and he was the reason why we were two minutes late. Because he was sitting there the whole time doing absolutely nothing, slacking off. I set this whole thing up to, to be honest. That's I don't know what, what you're even doing here. You, you you're just here there, to slow me down. You sat there in the way for an hour while I was setting up. Excuse me, I was out of the way. And then and then as I was ready to hit start, you went to the bathroom. Yes. Yes, as I do, because I don't know about you guys, but I don't know when I need to use the bathroom until I know it's time to do something else. <laughs> Is anyone else like that? I, I literally don't know that I need to wee until, until I'm told, all right, time to go, time to leave, time to get on stage. <laughs> Bro, it's the, it's the worst when I'm about to get on stage because the opening act will go out. This happened in Brisbane, right? The fucking opening act, he gets out. Uh, and he's uh, he's doing great. James Matthews is his name. This is in Brisbane. This happened really recently. And I told him, "Oh, do like do like seven to ten minutes." And it's about five minutes have gone by, and he's absolutely crushing. And I'm like, "Okay, cool. He's probably going to go at least to seven. I definitely have time to wee, right?" And I go to the bathroom backstage of my own show, and I'm on next. But I know I have at least about you know between three and five minutes left, so I, that's enough time for me to do a little wee, right? Because I know I'm going on stage, so my brain goes, well, actually, you need to wee. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I had no idea. What a surprise. Every time, I, every time I need to wee, it's like a bloody surprise. It's like Christmas. I'm like, oh, for me? A wee? Incredible, right? So I, I run to the bathroom, and I, you know, I get my dick out. And that alone, that's a process, you know? That's a, I mean, I, I, I had to get assistance, you know? That's a two-man job. <laughs> I would prefer it to be a two-woman job, but, you know, I, I, I work with what I can get, right? So anyway, I get my dick out, and then I just hear right before I start pissing, all right, guys, that's my time. Welcome to the stage, Lewis. And I hear that, and I fucking I zip up as quickly as I can. I, I stuff my dick, and that's a process. You know, that's a three-man process, putting it back, right? So I get the boys in to help me put it back into my jeans, and then I run out, and in the tour vlog that I released recently, that uh, that shot where I walk on stage and Rosie is filming me go on stage, you can actually see me doing my fly up. Uh, and then for the whole entire hour and ten minutes that I'm on stage, I'm just I need to go. Uh, so I don't know if anyone else is like that, or maybe that's just. Uh, Maybe that's just a symptom of uh, of uh, bladder cancer. I guess we'll find out, you know, next time I go to the doctors. But, of course, before I go to the doctors, I will need to use the bathroom. Um, so welcome to episode 250 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. What a milestone, you know. I've been doing this show every single Sunday for four years. <laughs> now, if anyone here is proficient with math, you might think, hmm, four times 52 is 52 weeks is about 52 Sundays shouldn't you actually be wait hang on a second no I've been doing this for longer than four years I've been doing this uh how long five years I've been doing this since January 2016 2016 okay so five years so some of you might be thinking five years five ten. 15, 20, 30. Am I retarded? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 300. That's what I should be up to. Episode 300. Yeah. But I'm actually up to episode 250, which means I over the past four years, I've missed an entire year worth of shows. Uh, we just got a $10 donation from Jepler. Ooh. Says the big 250. Gee whiz. Oh, gee whiz. Gee whiz. What? Uh, is, is that guy living in a cartoon? <laughs> gee whiz. Gee willikers. Episode 250. <laughs> oh, boy. Right? That means I think the real milestone is not actually episode 250. I think the real milestone is missing a year's worth of episodes. That's actually incredible. The, the, the amount that I've slacked off there, I've slacked off for an entire year. That's a quarter of the job. 
I'm not sure who's right, but everyone in the chat saying that you have really bad maths. Only really bad maths. Year. What do you mean? I'm not sure. I don't really know either. Well, no. So if there's supposed to be 300, oh, hang on. Five times five is 25. <laughs> well, then, no, that doesn't make sense. Then how am I up to episode 250? Because there's got to be way, I've missed way more. Maybe I've done it for more than four years. People are saying 52 times five. Yeah. You would have only missed 10 episodes. No, that's bullshit. I would have missed like way more than 10 episodes this year. Alex Sky in the chat saying January 2016 was 302 weeks ago. So you would have been on episode 300 had you done it correctly. Yeah. So I'm right. Yeah, you're right. Roughly right. I've missed an entire year's worth of episodes, which yes. means, right, basically, if there's been four years and I've missed an entire year... I'm only here a quarter of the time. I've only really done this podcast for a quarter of the time, uh, for three quarters of the time. There's this like, this like a one in four chance every week that I'm just not going to show up. <laughs> That's really high. <laughs> There's a one in four chance every single week that I'm just not going to do an episode. <laughs> That's shockingly high. I mean, if that was the COVID death rate, there'd be no, there'd be no debate. Everyone would be rolling their sleeves up, you know? One in four. I I think I can't tell because I failed you know maths, but yeah. everyone's telling. Well, oh, I, I two hundred and fifty dollars. Someone what? donated. DJ Ayers says two hundred and fifty dollars. All that matters is we made it to two fifty. Can't thank you very much. That's a dollar for each episode. That's uh, that's a good idea. I like that idea. In future, every episode is going to cost a dollar to listen to because that adds up. You know, imagine if every count who'd ever listened to the show is paid a dollar. I'd be a millionaire. I wouldn't be doing this show. I wouldn't be in fucking Hobart, that's for sure. Or maybe I would, but my house wouldn't be full of rats. Maybe that would be the difference. Um, but I think that's uh, that's actually great. There's a one in four chance that every time an episode comes out, or or every Sunday there's just going to be no episode. Keelan's cracking cokes. Gee, that's how you know lockdown started. You know, if you guys don't know, to all of my American view American viewers, yes, we're in lockdown again, right? I moved, bro. I moved states do you understand i did 111 days lockdown in a row and how long was the lockdown before that the long one 111 days. yeah but the one before that oh, that 60 days, 60 days. Yeah. so we've melbourne is all, almost would you reckon it'd be like almost 200 days or over 200 in lockdown over all up yeah. yeah definitely over yeah now i've spent more I've almost spent more days in lockdown than I have episodes on this show, right? So I don't know if you guys noticed, but I was going insane. You know, I've never looked more Tasmanian than before I moved to Tasmania. Like that, that really, you, go, you know, that wasn't actually me having a mental breakdown. What that was, was me like uh, proving to the Tasmanian government that I would fit in with the culture because they're very strict, the Tasmanian government, whenever you, whenever a dirty mainlander, right, you know those fucking gross mainlanders try and move to the small island of Tasmania, you need to be sure that they're going to fit in with the culture. So the, right away, the number one thing I did was I went on familytree.com and then I, and then I cross-referenced that with Tinder and fucked the closest relative I could. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't bag a first cousin, but I got a third, which counts. Right, so that was step one to get accepted into Tasmania. Step two was to have the dirtiest beard you've ever seen in your life, and a haircut that that's not a haircut, just a just a, a general lack of haircuts for months. That was step two. Step three, and this is the tough one, was uh, I just I just had to be, I just had to be like real elitist, which is hard for some people, but quite natural to me. So. Now I've come here and, uh, and, and you know what I think, right? I came here to escape the lockdowns and I got about two months. I got two months, no lockdown. Views going up, you know? Ticket sales going through the roof. I'm doing shows again. I'm living the life. I'm like, oh my God, I'm out of it. Meanwhile, I'm watching these bloody mainlanders run around with like, like headless chickens, just absolutely flailing their arms, stuck in lockdown, punching on with cops, Right? And then, just when I was feeling really superior, just when I felt like I'm the smartest cunt in the country, I was like, man, 
moving to Tasmania was the smartest thing I've ever done. But everyone in my comment section was like, oh my God, moving to Tasmania was the best thing that ever happened to Lewis. He's actually uploading. Wow, he's working with the team. I hired Rosie. I fired Keelan, which was a long time coming. Hey, hey man, what's up? <laughs> you, to be honest, something I've been putting off for ages. You know, that was honestly, that was probably something I should have done week one, but I had to wait at the time. <laughs> right? Because he doesn't really do anything around here, does he? He just, hey, he just, hey, hey what up? <laughs> he kind of just sits around, takes off space, and goes, hey. You know? I mean, the, the only thing he really does is get annoyed when I need, need to use the bathroom. <laughs> That's all he ever does. It's like, oh, you need to use the bathroom? Yes. <laughs> Money goals. Uh, Josh Hyde just donated $30. $30. Oh, thanks, mate. So can Lewis or Keelan confirm for us that Whitey didn't help set up this stream? Yeah, so uh, Uncle Whitey is uh, well known for providing tech support. Uh, on the Luke and Lewis show, and I just wanted to confirm, and Keelan will back me on this, Whitey had absolutely nothing to do with this. Did he? He didn't help at all. No, not at all. No, because if he did, it would be good. <laughs> Got him. Hey, hey. Let him into a trap. Hey, hey. Uh, no, Whitey did help. Whitey did help over FaceTime, and uh, and by help, what I, what it really was was Keelan and Whitey having a screaming match over the bit rate of the stream, something that I don't understand. I was using the bathroom at the time. <laughs> Right, so apparently uh, Keelan goes, Keelan has written on his own whiteboard, money goals. Talk about money goals. And then on this whiteboard here, we have another big section that says money goals. And both of them are blank. So I don't have any money goals here. We you know what? Here's a money goal. Give me $10,000 and I'll pocket it. That's a goal. We talked about this Guys, yesterday. if we collectively can raise $10,000 as a community, I, Lewis Spears, will pocket it. Thank you very much. What did we talk about? We talked about if you raised 15 grand, you yeah. live stream for 24 hours. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. $10,000, I'll pocket it. $15,000, it's a 24-hour stream. Hang on, here we go. What? Ripley with the donation. You're going to hate this. What? Ripley goes, sorry, Lewis, this donation is for Keelan only because everyone knows I only give money to Keelan. Okay, how much? 50 bucks. Absolutely not. That's mine. Pocketing <laughs> it. I'm splitting that with, between me and Susan Wojcicki. Hey, Susie, buy yourself something nice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Susie, hey, stop. Why didn't talk to you? What was I saying? Oh, yeah, I've become a mainlander. So right when I was feeling super... Like, smart. I felt like, dude, I was the smartest guy on earth. I was having people message me every fucking day from Sydney, from Melbourne, even from Brisbane at one point when it looked like they were going to go locked down. They were like, oh, man, I should have done this. You, you're a genius. I can't believe it. I'm living vicariously through you. You know, people watching me swim, watching me work out, watching me work, watching me hang out watching me leave the house, everyone was going, dude, you made the best decision ever. I mean, I, fuck, I was watching Frenchie spiraling downwards. That cunt's gone so crazy, he's printed out a life-size cut out of Gladys and he's keeping it in his room. Where the fuck did he buy that? Who sells a life-size Gladys cutout? What business is that? Who starts the business of like, man, I'm going to sell life-size cutouts of, pol of Australian politicians, you know? I would say it, I would say it'd be like some strange life-sized fetish sex store, but Lord knows they wouldn't print her on on anything. They wouldn't make any money, right? So uh, I'm watching this and I'm feeling very superior. Me and Keelan are like, dude, we made the best call ever. It was so good. We had to do two weeks quarantine here in Tassie. We're like, no, nah, that's easy compared to what we've gone through in Melbourne because we know at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we're going to be free for the rest of the year, right? And for 60 days, all was quiet in Tasmania. Not a peep out of COVID. And then the mainlanders struck. Those Now, I, as a Tasmanian, as a full-blood, homegrown, lifelong Tasmanian, right? I'm Taswegian. I speak the language, okay? Oi, can't you want a root? Things said at a family dinner. I, w I tried to shut the door on my way in, you know? I tried to shut the door behind me. That's what I did. Did you notice that I was late to the car when we got off the Spirit of Tasmania? Did you notice that I was late to the car? I did. Do you know what, what I was doing? What were you I was doing? welding the door shut. <laughs> I was welding it shut. And you know what? I reckon there was, there was still some people in there. 
I don't give a fuck. I reckon it's worth it. What the first step is I made a big hole in the bottom of the ship. The second step was I welded the door shut. Is that going to put us on a no sail list? <laughs> yeah, we might not be allowed. The things you've said about the spirit of Tasmania might not allow you back on. Well, luckily this isn't live streamed. We can just edit it out. <laughs> fuck! <laughs> guys, guys, that's all parody and satire. I would never do such a thing. I did that in Minecraft, a popular video game for people with autism. <laughs> Now, look, I tried my very best to shut the door behind me, you know? A lot of people believe in this philosophy of helping their fellow Australians, you know, getting a leg up and pulling up those who, who are less fortunate than you. I view that as a waste of time and counterproductive to your own success. What I really think you should be doing is instead of using the stairs or climbing the ladder, you should be jumping on the heads of others and pushing them downwards and then shutting the door behind you and then going, ha ha, you can't get good things because I'm hoarding all the wealth, you know? I, that's, that's what I believe. So I tried to shut the door behind me. Uh, it obviously didn't work because the mainlanders made it to Tasmania and uh, God... Those fucking dirty man. As a Tas, as a Tasmanian, you know, me and Keelan, we're both Taswegian. We were furious that they would even let a, a, a single filthy mainlander in. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. So, uh, what what happened was this is our first COVID scare in Tasmania, right? And uh, it's it's the most Tasmanian shit ever. Like you couldn't get a more Tasmanian COVID scare than this, right? Family comes over. From Sydney, I believe, right? Can't remember. Didn't read it. And I won't. So if you're thinking, how true is this? I'm going to hit you with a, look, just like the Spearhead Sunday's podcast, there's a quarter chance that this is just all bullshit. Everything I say, one in four is going to be wrong, all right? You know, just like every episode I should be doing, one in four, you're going to miss me right? One in four things said throughout the show is going to be false. The first one was that story about sinking the spirit of Tasmania. That's our first falsy, right? This one, who knows? Family comes over from Sydney. They're positive and they know they've got it, right? Uh, and then their 15-year-old kid meets up with his cousin to go down to the local IGA to buy cigarettes on their bikes, if that's not the most fucking Tasmanian thing on earth, I don't know what is. The only way that could get more Tasmanian is if instead of his cousin buying cigarettes, he was buying condoms. That's the only way. Actually, they wouldn't use condoms. Maybe the cigarettes were for post-coitus. You don't like that? That's, oh, I thought you were going to go further with that. No, I would never go further. Absolutely not. In fact, we'll just edit that one out. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hang on, and, can I just interrupt for a second? You may, I'll allow it. $20 donation from Benjamin. Well, thank you, Ben. Um, you got a $10 donation from Charlie, and I think this one's great. Well, thank you, Charlie. Congratulations on 250 episodes. I was at your Gimpy show. Boy, you've come so far since. Dude. Yeah, this is really far away from Gimpy, isn't it? This is about as far away from Gimpy as you can get. And then another uh, highlight e uh, $10 donation it just says, Missing Link Do. Oh, great. Well, that's a different podcast, but thank you for the money. Um, so... Yeah, this kid goes to an IGA and, bro, I looked up in the news. If you guys want to do this right now, open up another tab and just Google COVID IGA Tasmania and have a look at the fucking IGA. That thing is dilapidated. I don't know what, that, what the fuck they sell there. I would imagine that they just sell cigarettes and they pull them straight out of the foundations of the building. That's what's holding it together. That thing looks like it's about to fall over the, it, it, the minute the wind blows. Like the only thing holding that IGA up is the lack of wind because of the it's close to the mountain. There's no wind. I don't know. I, I saw that IGA and I was like, is that a fucking trap house? I, th I said on a previous episode, I think it looked like a, like a fallout shelter, not an actual bomb shelter, like a shelter from the video game Fallout. It was so dilapidated. I, I would, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if I walked into that fucking IGA and there was a rad roach and then it killed me. Right? One of those legendary level fucking 95 rad roaches had some really good loot, but it just fucks you up and you just rage quit, hit, hit F9 and walk the other direction. That's, that's the shit that would be in there, you know? But apparently there's ciggies in there. So that was the first one, right? And then they kind of freaked out, but then they did their, their contact tracing. And, uh, and luckily, 
They literally kept it within the family. Like only the cousin was around that kid. No one got it. It was all good. I was like, oh man, even when Tasmania has COVID scares, they're so on top of it that we avoid lockdowns. I'm the smartest man ever. I had so many people messaging me going, you fucking idiot, you dumbass. Good luck. Now you're going to be in lockdown. And then you know what else? Straight after next day, apology. Sorry, man. Looks like Tasmania is the best place on earth. And I said, that's right, it is. And then I fucked my sister. What, you don't like that one? I thought it was good. Yeah, all right, thank you. Did you fuck her? (laughs) (laughs) But then, guys, yesterday, some news hit Hobart. Another filthy fucking mainlander Someone from Sydney traveled all the way from Sydney illegally down to Melbourne and then illegally again on the spirit of Tasmania and made it to Hobart with COVID. And then they just chucked him in hotel quarantine and then the cunt escaped hotel quarantine and they didn't see him on the CCTV cameras, which means he didn't, like, sneak out the front door. I've seen the quarantines here in Tassie. We drive past them all the time. It's a military base. It's literally the military base from Grand Theft Auto. There's cunts wearing, fuck, holding rifles, dressed in green, patrolling. I've never seen marching. I thought that was only a thing that sec- that uh, security guards did in Hitman 3. I've never seen cunts going up and then back and then up and then back. I've never seen it in my life. So either he fucking turned on his Batman goggles and could see their cunts heartbeat through the walls, used a batarang to knock him out and then walked through while the other guy had his back turned. Or he fucking ninja guided his way, his way out the window because they didn't see him. And honestly... A lot of people in Tasmania are really angry at this guy. I'm truly from the bottom of my heart fucking impressed. Do you understand how difficult it is to do what he did? He got from Sydney to Melbourne illegally and then from Melbourne onto the spirit of Tasmania. If you don't know, it's almost impossible to get on the fucking boat. (laughs) I don't know how we got on the boat. There were like, when we got on the boat, there were six checkpoints. And after I welded the door shut, they're probably looking for bags for welders too, right? One in four. That's not true. I would never. (laughs) Right? I don't know how the fuck he got on the boat. Maybe he just did, maybe he did like, uh, he did a James Bond and he used an underwater jet ski. What's that called? A submarine? Fucking moron. (laughs) Hey, what's that, uh, that underwater jet ski? A submarine. He used a submarine and he latched onto the bottom of the boat and held his breath all the way there. Maybe he did that, right? And then he got off the boat and that's where he got caught. Man, what a bummer. So anyway, he escapes hotel quarantine and then he just goes to a mate's place, gets arrested. But before he got arrested, he went to the supermarket for like two hours. I imagine to lick the aisle, you know, just to like cough on the bickies, lick the floor, you know, touch all the, touch all the hand, the, all the shopping carts, Right. Just talk to everyone with with really big H words. Hello. <laughs> Hello. How are you? I'm loving my time in Tasmania. You know, every syllable he adds an H. <coughs> I've got it now. Um, and then he gets arrested, obviously, and he just doesn't cooperate. They're like, where have you been? He goes, not telling, cunt. It's a fucking secret. Right? So then we get a three day snap lockdown and 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 I was me and Keelan were fuming. This happened yesterday. Three day snap lockdown gets announced. We're like, fuck, we we abandon work. We're supposed to be editing. There would probably would have been a video yesterday. You know, but we were like, fuck this, we're going to the pool. Right? So we have a big swim set. And uh and then we get back and they go, oh, yeah, so uh, there's lockdown. He won't tell us where he's been and uh, we don't know how long it's going to go for. Three days, right? And we've heard, we've all heard that before. We've got PTSD. I know what a seven-day snap lockdown means. That means 90, that means 111 days and, and the death of my career. 
That's what that means. I've seen this shit before. And if it couldn't get any worse, if it couldn't get any worse right after our lockdown started, Melbourne's ended. Dude, I've never received so many ha-ha fuck you messages in my life. I got them, I got them from my girl. She's going, ha-ha, fuck you. Sucked in. And you know what? I deserve it. But I will have my revenge. <laughs> so, look. It's supposed to end tomorrow. But he goes, oh, you know. He won't tell us where he's been so we can't contact Trey. So, fuck, man. I might have to escape. Maybe I'll do what he did and just go to Perth. How long do you reckon you could hold on to the underside of the spirit of Tasmania, Keelan? Uh, what is it, a 16-hour trip? It's real slow, so I reckon the whole time. The whole time, just underwater? How long can you hold your breath? 15, 16 hours? 18 hours. 18 hours? Well, that's good. You know, you got, you got two hours in there, just in case. <laughs> they check the bottom for holes. Which there wouldn't be. No, no, no there, there wouldn't be, and I'm not suggesting that. Um... Fuck, man. So anyway, yeah, now we're in lockdown and that's why we're doing this because we may have done a live actual show event, but instead we're doing this, okay? Um, so I wanted to talk uh, a little bit about uh, the Dave Chappelle backlash. I don't know if you guys have seen this, uh, the, the Dave Chappelle comedy special. So firstly, uh, straight off the bat, I'm obviously biased. I'm a comedian. I love the guy. He's the best comic ever. He's the best comedian there ever has been. And I don't see anyone eclipsing him. My personal favorite is Bill Burr. He's my favorite guy. Uh, but Bill, I guess, doesn't have the, uh, the, the cultural impact, I suppose, of Dave Chappelle is what you, what you would describe it. Uh, my favorite is Bill, uh, but I get that Dave's the goat. Uh, that's what it is, right? So um, Dave does his special, blah, blah. I'm sure uh, everyone's seen it. I loved it. I thought it was, I actually, and this is actually, even among people who really like Dave, this is kind of a controversial opinion. I thought it was his best one. I loved it. I thought it was his funniest. I really, really liked it. I thought it was hilarious. I laughed harder than I have watching the, the other ones, which I also loved. I thought it was his strongest. I might have to go back and watch the other ones because from what I'm seeing, it seems like a lot of people disagreed. Like a lot of people thought it was really funny, but the other ones were better. I thought this one was the fucking best. I really loved it. His joke about COVID and, uh, and uh, the, I won't spoil it, but like the hate crimes, one of the funniest jokes I've ever heard. Really stupid and silly. I love it, right? Um, but everyone's really upset about it. Everyone's really angry, which is weird because I watched it with... Greeley, Keel, and Rosa, we all loved it. We all thought it was great. Um, well, I guess it's not weird that cunts are angry about comedy, is it? That's just par for the course at this point. You do anything, people get angry. Um, but there was a big backlash from the trans community, um, you know, who are legends. Good on them. I couldn't do that shit. Seems like uh, a lot of effort, you know? They're brave. I, I mean that for real. That shit's brave as fuck. Couldn't imagine turning my penis inside out just to get a pussy. I mean, you got to really want a pussy. You know, I've, I, I, like sometimes, you know, I went on a regional tour and I was away from my girl for months. Never been more horny in my life. I stayed in a caravan for like two months with a bunch of boys and the only time we had any privacy was in public trailer park bathroom. So there were no wanks had. So I would say that at that moment in my life, that's the most I've ever wanted pussy in my life. And I still probably wouldn't turn my penis inside out to get it. So, you know, God bless those ladies because they want it. And I, I actually think, you know, contrary to what a lot of people say, I think they're very tough people. I think they've, trans people are very strong people. You have to be to, to be trans. You have to see what you want and you have to see what's going to happen if you go after it and you have to go, fuck, I'm going to do it anyway. Not a, not a want. It's like, a, it's like a, a need, you know? It's not a choice. I don't think that, right? I mean, how fucking gnarly would it be if it was a choice? You know, I reckon that's, I reckon I, that's cooler. Like... <laughs> 
Don't you think that's cooler? Like, like it's not, but let's just entertain the idea that imagine if it was a choice. How fucking gnarly is that? Like, you know what that would be? That would be like when you see those, uh, those cunts who try and turn themselves into, into like uh, lizards and they get the forked tongues and they go, I just really want to look like a snake, you know? And it's like, they don't need you. They just really want to. And you're like, fuck, that's strange, but that's I, cool. Get after it. Uh, how, how fucking cool would it be if it was just a choice? Like one day... Some bloke just woke up and was like, you know what? I reckon I'm going to go through a bunch of elective surgeries, turn my cock inside out, make it into a pussy, bolt on some big tits, completely change the facial structure of my face and endure a lot of bigotry and oppression and hatred and a lot of violence just because I want to, just because I feel like it. That would be, I mean, that's cool, you know? Like, why the fuck did you do that? You're like, I felt like it today. That's fucking sick, all right? But obviously, it's not a choice. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that if it was, I reckon that'd be fucking awesome. Um, There's got to be one. Surely there's got to be one out there that's just like, yeah, just... Just felt like it for a little bit, you know. Just kind of, just it, just it just felt. I I wanted to do it. It's it looked fun. There's got to be at least one trans person, you know. There's got to be. Like imagine if Elliot Page was just doing it for a laugh. Like he was just like, man, I just want, I just wanted to like freak out Vogue magazine. <laughs> Is this going down well in the comments? No. <laughs> no, people aren't a fan of this one. They're not a fan of this one? Not really. Some no? Of the, some people are, but uh, there's a lot of uh, mm. face palms. A lot of face palms. A lot of people worry that I'm going to get myself in trouble. Guys, I'm saying that it's not, but if it was, that'd be a li- there's some comedy in that, right? So anyway, my point is, I think that trans people are really tough. They're tough. You've got to be tough. I mean, at the end of the day, if, if you have to turn your cock into a vagina, you got to go through a bunch of surgeries and then the recovery process, you know what you get at the end of that? You get a tough cunt. Literally, you get a tough cunt. <laughs> so I have a lot of respect for trans people. I think they're cool, Right? Not cool in the sense that, like, in culture, cool, you know? Like, that, like, like it's not, you know, like, Culture Kings is cool, you know? Like, people look at Culture Kings and they go, fuck, that's cool. Imagine if Culture Kings was just a bunch of trans people hanging around, you know? Like, fuck, that shop's cool. And you see, like, a bunch of six foot four women and then, like, five foot three dudes just hanging out. You're like, fuck, that's really cool. Look at those cool guys. You know, like, black people are cool. Maybe we'll get to that point, you know? Do you reckon we'll ever get to that point where like trans people will be fucking, they'll just, they'll just naturally cool. Black people are there, you know, like racism's not over, but the average black guy is quite cool. A lot cooler than your average white dude. You know, you look at a black guy walking down the street and you're like, that guy even walks cool. You know, doesn't that piss you off as a white guy? You look at a black dude and he walks cool. And you're like, how the fuck did you do that? Did you decide to do that? Or is it natural? You know, imagine if we get to that point with trans people. Like, fuck, look at her. She's cool. You know, and, sh- and she's like fucking six foot six in heels, just walking down the street. You're like, what a fucking cool bitch. Look at her go. What am I saying? Anyway, Dave Chappelle. <laughs> so these cool, tough cunts are really angry at Dave Chappelle. And uh, I, I don't know. I just, thought, I just thought it was really funny. And I think, that the, uh, I think that the point Dave was trying to... I think what the point is... And obviously, you know, I'm a white guy, so I can't properly understand it because it's a very, like, African-American thing. I'm a straight white guy from Australia weighing in on African-American male versus trans community. <laughs> and here's what I think... Just in case anyone wanted to know, I think that what Dave was trying to say was I feel like the black rights movement isn't finished and I know what it's like to be discriminated against and I feel like 
uh, the world has moved on from our issues and is now focusing on these issues. And for some reason, this group of people is seen as less than my group of people, even though we're not up there with white people yet. I think basically that was kind of what he was saying. What are you laughing at? You can't say. Uh, is someone just writing something heinous in the comments? <laughs> uh, no, and you... no, 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 no. Uh, Phil Dogs is in chat. Caleb Templeman's in chat. A couple other names. Big Phil. Greeley Big Caleb. He's in the chat still. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> everyone's just commenting Dave Chappelle, but written incorrectly. Oh, Dave Chappell. <laughs> no, Chappelle, just, <laughs> just written incorrectly. Okay, great. Well, that's, that's really good. That... <laughs> How many people are watching this right now? <laughs> 462. That's pretty <laughs> it's, good. It's making me laugh. Everyone's doing it. Okay, great. Well, that's, I mean, <laughs> look, this is this is why I'm not looking at the comments. <laughs> because could you imagine how fucking convoluted this shit show would be if I was just reading all of you cunts <laughs> writing Dave Chappelle's name wrong on purpose? <laughs> look at how fucking fast the chat is moving. That's ridiculous. That's why people are like, oh, why aren't you engaging with the chat? Because there's nothing to engage with <laughs> there's nothing there uh, that's fucked <laughs> who gave me money what are they right if they wrote dave Chappelle and they gave me money i'm gonna moving, lose it it's moving too quick you can't even read what they wrote oh. well fuck <laughs> dude if some cunt pays 20 bucks to say dave Chappelle, i'm gonna end the stream and the podcast <laughs> someone five canadian dollars dave Chappelle. five canadian dollars what's that two dollars in monopoly money <laughs> is that even a real currency um, oh my God. Right, so <laughs> that's what I thought about the Dave Chappelle thing, you know? See, you thought that you thought the trans bit was going off the rail. I got back on topic and now look where we are. All right. All right if you guys don't behave, I'm going I'm going back to trying to find the gold in what if being trans was a choice. I'm gonna keep digging. I'll find it one day. I think that's metal. If some dude was like, you know what? Fuck all this privilege. I feel like being a chick. Um $20, someone says Dave Chappelle. That's it. Great. That's it. It's over. See you later. <laughs> End the stream. Um, but that, yeah, that's what I think. And now, you know, uh, a bunch $20. of uh, a that's bunch it. of trans employees at Netflix have uh, are holding Netflix accountable. Um, and uh, and they've been fired for it. If you Okay, so depending on who you believe, if you've seen some left-wing news, uh, what happened was uh, one trans person... Uh, wrote a tweet going, I didn't think that Dave Chappelle's special was really funny. Uh, and then uh, what Netflix did was they sent down the HR department and they executed her right in front of everyone in the office and then they didn't clean up the body for days. So that if, you, if you follow left-wing news, that's what Netflix did. If you follow right-wing news, what actually happened was uh, uh, a trans person, right, who was uh, ran, in, ran into... Uh, a, a, a woman's bathroom and then just and just chopped off the head of a female CEO and said, this is because you put out Dave Chappelle's special and then detonated a bomb in the basement and the entire building collapsed. So depending on whether you follow left wing or right wing news, it's, it's a lot, it's very varied what actually happened. But if you get down and you find some, some real balanced uh, news, like uh, some, someone who's someone in the middle, like, uh, Who's someone in the storm front? No. Uh, uh, Rebel News, uh, no. And Antifa Outlet, no. Uh, someone in the middle, uh, like Ben Shapiro, right? What happened, the truth of the situation is uh, a couple of trans employees were very upset about Dave Chappelle's special and they tweeted about it, which, you know, go for it. That's their right. If you didn't like something and you feel like it's hurting you, absolutely, you should say something. That's, that's great. I think that's awesome. Um, and Netflix actually came out and said, we love that. You know, we love discourse. We can do that, which is really great. Like, I really like that. Like as, and I think I'm going to take that on board as a person who employs people is that if any one of my employees complain about anything, I'm going to go, I really love that you've, that you've said that. Like, you know, I love discourse in the workplace. You know, like for example, I haven't paid Keelan for months. And he raised the issue with me and he said, hey man, I haven't been paid for months. I can't afford to buy food. I've just been eating the scraps that the rats leave behind. <laughs> and they bite. Uh, and I said, "That's I'm really glad that you've raised that here because we, we love to foster discussion in the workplace. And then I ignored the cunt, 
right? Which is basically what Netflix did. They said, we love that you've said that. We're all for open and honest discussion. Now get back to work, cunt. That's what they did, right? Which there's not anything particularly wrong with that. If they go, hey, we don't like that you put this out, they'll go, oh, that's strange because uh, this many million people did. So don't watch it, you know? And then uh, the narrative is that this this person was fired for that when in reality what they did was they interrupted like a high-level CEO meeting or some shit to talk about the Dave thing, you know? Like imagine that. Like they're probably having some mundane meeting about like, oh, yeah, so uh, viewership is up and uh, Squid Game's going really well and uh, the dub was absolutely horrific, uh, but maybe next time we do an international show we could get a better dub and uh, numbers are up and everything's going well. And then like some chick bursts in and is like, you need to take Dave Chappelle's special down. And they were like, well, we paid $20 million for it and we have a contract, so we literally can't. Uh, and then they got fired for that. Um, I actually don't know what gender they are. I'm saying she, I'm assuming that. Um, I might be wrong. Um, I, haven't, I haven't seen them. Um, and then the whole narrative was, oh my God, they fired her because she sent out a tweet when really they fired her because they burst into a meeting, you know? And which I, which I asked, again, as an employer, I actually would have fired them for, for having an opinion. I really do think as an employer, and I'm sure you guys will agree, that employees shouldn't have a voice. They should be, I mean, unfortunately, they have to be seen but not heard. If I had it my way, they'd be, the cunts would be invisible too. But unfortunately, I, I do have to... <laughs> Oh, Rosie's shocked. Um, I am joking. You know, I'm very happy that you're visible. I love walking downstairs and seeing your, your bright smiles every day. I'm lying. Um, no. Uh, yeah, I think that, yeah, they were fired for that reason. But now they've been reinstated, you know. So that's kind of cool. So it's 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 interesting to see what level of uh, of outrage on Twitter what it can actually do, you know, what change can outrage actually do? So obviously Twitter outrage can't actually achieve the goal that it wanted to, which was take down Dave Chappelle's special. They didn't actually achieve that, but they did enable you to yell at your boss, you know, burst into a meeting and scream at the boss. You would get fired for that at just about any other job unless Twitter gets angry enough that you can get reinstated, you know? That's cool. I think that's great. So, Keelan, this is, might be inspirational to you. You get one screaming, one outburst of rage in the workplace mm. if afterwards you can also make a few hundred thousand people complain that I fired you for it. Then you get your job back. So but, it's high risk, high reward. But if... But if not, I don't have a job. I don't make the rules, man. Okay, I won't be asking for that money. <laughs> See, that's good. That's that's what that's what you really want in in a team. You don't want a team that you celebrate your successes with. You want to keep your successes and your team separate uh, and have them like have broken spirits. Um. <laughs> uh, here we go. We got uh, a couple people trying to get. To fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, one guy says twenty dollars each, and we can make it to fifteen thousand um, dollars. Ooh, okay. And you've made from that two people have donated fifteen dollars. Well, what is that? Fourteen thousand nine hundred and ninety-eight left. <laughs> Wait, I'm a fucking are, idiot. I I'm think a we're moron. Fourteen thousand five hundred left. Yeah, right. I was trying to do people, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm so dumb, and I'm just proving it on live stream, right? Um. Someone else can do the math. In between spelling Dave Chappelle's name wrong, <laughs> someone else can do the calculation. You Dave know? Chappelle D's nuts is what everyone's saying now. Great. Well, why did I do this? You know? Every now and then I'm like, oh, I should do something nice for you guys. And then you guys write Dave Chappelle D's nuts. <laughs> and I go, well, that was, you know, at least I made 40 bucks and five Canadian dollars, which I which I believe is $2 in Monopoly money. Um, but the, the most recent development on the Dave Chappelle outrage is uh, fellow Australian comedian Hannah Gadsby has come out uh, against Dave Chappelle. She's got two specials on Netflix. Um, and, uh, and the reason she's come out 
is because the CEO of Netflix or some big boss at Netflix was like, hey guys, we totally appreciate that you guys are upset about this, uh, but we actually support a wide array of voices and that's why we put out things like this by this person, this by that person and one of the people he referenced was Hannah Gadsby. Uh, we put out this by these two specials by Hannah Gadsby. And then, uh, of course, because it's the internet, everyone went and fucking harassed Hannah Gadsby, which I'm sure did happen. You know, I've seen the shit that people write, up, write about her. It's not very nice. Although neither was her comedy special, but that doesn't excuse what she's went through, right? Um, and uh, she actually came out and uh, slammed Dave Chappelle, but more so slammed the CEO. was like, why the fuck did you bring my name into it? Which I think is honestly fair. You know, like I reckon she just got over the all of everyone trashing Nanette, you know, because that went on for fucking years. She put that special out and for years, every single comment under every single stand up comedy clip, whether or not the clip was good or bad was, well, it's better than Nanette. You know, if it was a really good clip, it'd be like, oh, this is so much better than Nanette. And if it was a really bad clip of a comedian bombing, they'd be like, this is terrible, but not as bad as Nanette. You know, that went on for fucking years. And I feel like she just got over it. And then the Netflix CEO was like, nah, we're bringing you back in. And so she was very upset. Um, And she's actually uh, Tasmanian. She's a Tasmanian comedian, but she went to America. So I feel like now I can really claim biggest Tasmanian comedian. I am the biggest comedian in Tasmania. Perhaps not in size, ticket sales or bank balance, but definitely in height. I can say that just about anywhere. I'm the biggest comedian in Australia. I don't think there's a comedian taller than me. I am literally the biggest comedian in the country. If you're talking height, right? And perhaps ego. Um, (laughs) Right? I Look, honestly, I liked Nanette. I thought it was great. I thought it was really good. Uh, probably because I had the context of, oh, it's not going to be a a laugh a minute comedy show. I knew what it was going to be and I went in expecting that and I thought it was great. I thought that she executed exactly what she wanted to execute. She did it well. She got in, she got out. There were some funny bits. It was mostly sad, but I thought it was a beautiful show. It wasn't uh, hilarious and I don't think that was the goal. And I thought it was great, uh, but then... What annoyed me was when everyone was like, oh, this is what comedy should be. I was like, no, it was a good show. It's not what stand-up should be. Stand-up should be funny. Um, but I feel like her second one was funny. Douglas, haven't watched it. Probably won't. Good on her. She's having a crack. Um, right. So now, right, that it's episode 250. How long are we going for? Oh, 46 minutes. Man, we're going good. Uh, okay, Greeley has just sent me a text. <laughs> so... I don't know if I can say this on stream. Greeley sent me a text about the guy. He said it? Say it, say it. Okay. So Greeley, who's a Tasmanian, right, who knows lots of people, uh, this is the, the, the second guy who broke out of quarantine, right? This is the guy who traveled from Sydney to Melbourne, then got on a boat, made it to Tasmania, all illegally, then got stuck in quarantine, and then left, broke out of quarantine, probably by climbing out a window, um, and to visit a friend's place. So Greeley just texts me, and I don't know how true this is, and I don't know how he knows this. Well, I know how he knows this. <laughs> the grapevine. The guy that broke out of quarantine was not going to see his family. He broke out of quarantine to buy crack. <laughs> Which explains the lack of cooperation with the feds. Where have you been? And he's like, fuck, if I tell these guys... Like, that's that's a choice you have to make, isn't it? If you've bought crack and the police are trying to find out where you've been, not because of the crack, but because of contact tracing, right? You've got a real choice to make. It's like, fuck, am I going to snitch on my dealer to... (laughs) Or am I going to avoid a lockdown? That's a big responsibility, you know? Like what is what dogs the boys more? What's more of a snitch attitude? Is snitching on your dealer and getting him locked up or getting the entire state locked up? That's a big choice. Who am I locking up? My dealer or the country? Technically, if you go the country, you still lock up the dealer. What a legend. That's so Tasmanian. No wonder he's not helping. That's hilarious. Love, love, love that Greeley knows that. And the cops don't. Can I propose something? You want to propose? 
As an idea. Oh. So the stream so far has made six hundred and fifty dollars. Ooh. If it makes. If it makes a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. We go for an extra twenty minutes. Yeah, I definitely have an extra twenty minutes. I haven't even gotten into the into the emails yet. I was meaning by the end of this hour. So in. Oh yeah, an hour twenty. In yeah. Fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Sweet. All right. If we if we reach a thousand dollars in the next fifteen minutes. We'll extend the email segment. I got some fucking banger emails, actually. I got some really good ones. Um, but uh, I thought we would, because it's episode 250, we would take a, a trip down memory lane. Or let's do that later because I w- really want to get into this article. I saw this article and I thought, this is prime Spearhead Sunday's gear, right? Um, so let me pull this up. This is a Wall Street Journal article and this is so good. I saw this and I thought, that's awesome. I love that, okay? I'm just loading it up now. So here's the headline, okay? Wall Street Journal. Teen girls are developing tics. Doctors say TikTok could be a factor. When teens started turning up in doctor's offices with sudden severe physical tics, specialists suspected social media. The girls had been watching Tourette Syndrome TikTok videos. So from the headline, I haven't read the article, right? But I will be making a judgment, of course, from the headline. Hang on, I've just got a text from Greeley. All right, we're going back into it. Okay. (laughs) All right. So this is uh this is a Facebook post. So take (laughs) So I was like, hey, how does Greeley know this? And he sends me a Facebook post. So you know it's true. All right. All those studies about misinformation that uh, Facebook have done on on themselves and found themselves to be guilty, that's all bullshit. This is a hundred percent true. All right, so uh, Greeley says the police have done about 25 raids over the weekend because of this cunt. Okay, sweet. Uh, Really messing up Hobart's economy. All right, so look, out of respect for this absolute champion, I will be censoring his name because I don't know how true this is. Uh, Tom. Tom thought it would be cool to run away from quarantine and gallivant around the northern suburbs of Hobart. He, of course, had the Delta COVID strain and thought his needs were more of a priority than others. This is such a classic shaming Facebook post, isn't it? You know, I love I love the shaming posts that read like fairy tales. (laughs) Once upon a time, there was a fuckwit. (laughs) Right. And and I hope he doesn't live happily ever after. Boomers love that shit. It's like, oh, finally, news presented in a format I can understand. Fairy tales. Um, (laughs) He, of course, had the Delta COVID strain and thought his needs were more of a priority than others. His numbskull partner slash mates thought the same. They picked him up. So these idiots, three three exclamation points, classic boomer post. So these idiots drove around doing what we all know they were up to at Montrose Park. Cough, junkie, cough. Buying their ciggies at Woolworths, putting people at risk, including the incredibly vulnerable. Our mate here, Mr. Whatever, after being captured and brought back into quarantine, now has decided to show how hardcore he is and refuse to cooperate or wear a mask. So I feel... Any tattoo artists out there interested in tattooing a mask on Mr. Tom? A nice little reminder for the day the junkie went rogue. Oh, a nice little threat. (laughs) A nice little threat of human rights abuse there at the end of that little fairy tale. And at the end of the day, we tattooed a mask on the cunt's face against his will. And he lived sadly ever after. What a nice little boomer Facebook post. That's awesome. I love that. Um... What was I doing? What was I saying? Uh, oh, yeah. Before you move on, sorry. We just mm-hmm. got a bunch of donations. $20 from Thomas. He says hello in a high-pitched voice. Hello. And then $50 Wrong podcast. From, thank you. from Brandon. He says congrats on 250 episodes. Hey, thank you, Brandon. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> that's it. You said a bunch. Oh, sorry. We got... Are these guys poor? Five dollars. This is five dollars for Keelan. Get yourself something nice. No, you don't. No, don't, that's, don't keep that's, the one secret. That's, that's not yours. That's mine. That, a lot of them are for me. And no, I'm just not reading no, them. a lot of them are for me, <laughs> and they're saying it's for you, but it's going in my bank account. The amount of fucking streams I've done on your fucking channel, and the amount of money that you've made using that's my why face. I'm not saying anything. Yeah, right. That's why I haven't. Said a likely thing. story. This is why I wanted access to my YouTube account. <laughs> trying to siphon my money. Right. Teen girls are developing tics. Doctors say that TikTok could be a factor. Huh, it's in the name. Sorry, guys. When teens... That, that gets a laugh. Really? Go to your room. 
When teens started turning up in doctor's offices with sudden severe physical tics, specialists suspected social media the girls had been watching Tourette's Syndrome TikTok videos. So, from, again, I haven't read the article, but from the headline, that's great. This is what I've been saying. TikTok is bad for people's children's brains because this whole self-diagnosing your, yourself with, like, mental illness is becoming such a thing. There's there's so many people like self-diagnosing themselves with autism and all these other like uh, mental uh, illnesses as well that they're just, they're reading the symptoms in a, in a fucking 15 second TikTok and they're like, yeah, that's me, you know? So many, I see so many of these. And, and also another one that I love is also is <laughs> like people going, oh, you know when you get, uh, angry when you stub your toe that's a trauma response or people going oh my favorite one was do you know the difference between your father's and your mother's footsteps that's ptsd hey what if what if my mum was a big fat bitch and she stomped (laughs) that's not ptsd that's mum having too many burgers (laughs) maybe dad's lying on his feet you don't know me what if, what if my dad was Oscar Pistorius and he was walking around on those little fucking things, right? I would know that it'd be him going down the hallway because you would hear boing, 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 <laughs> ch- ch- bang. It's not, it's not fucking PTSD to be able to differentiate the sound of people you live with. Let me tell you, there's a big difference between Rosie and Keelan walking around the house. <laughs> Hey man, what's up? Um, because because Rosie's limping at the moment. Okay. Oh fuck you! I have to sign up to read this article. I didn't have to sign up to read it on my computer. Right. Well, whatever. I'll read the first two paragraphs. Can you bring it up on my computer, if pos? Um. Teenage girls across the globe have been showing up at doctor's offices with tics, physical jerking movements, and verbal outbursts since the start of the pandemic. And that's really when TikTok kicked off, isn't it? All right, here we go. I got this article here. I think I have, uh, I don't have to pay for it. So, um, movement disorder doctors were stumped at first. Girls with tics are very rare. And these teens had an unusually high number of them, which had just developed suddenly. After months of studying the patients and consulting with one another, experts at top pediatric hospitals in the US, Canada, Australia, and the UK discovered that most of the girls had something in common, TikTok. Well, that's not conclusive evidence. Every teenage girl has TikTok. It's like, if, if, you, see, if you see like a, some chick wasting away and she's got a giant lump in her forehead, you go, uh, is that brain cancer or does she have TikTok on her phone? Um, According to a spate of recent medical journal articles, uh, doctors say uh, girls have been watching videos of TikTok influencers who said they had Tourette's syndrome, a nervous system disorder that causes... Uh, yeah, I know what it is. Um, no one has tracked these cases nationally, but pediatric movement disorder centers across the US are reporting an influx of teen girls with similar tics. That's great. See, I love... Now, I, I, I haven't read these studies, so you know maybe these studies could be bullshit, but if true, that means that like a bunch of people are watching TikToks and then pretending to have it and going to Tourette specialists so that they can feel special. I, re- You know what? Here's how you know how true it is because you want to get all of these girls that are coming in that you suspect are coming in through TikTok and you want to look at them and go, Do they ha- are the tics they have cute? You know? Because there is one girl on TikTok that she goes, Neh! and it's really cute. And every time she does that, I want to go, <laughs> it's really cute. You know, she'll be talking and then she'll go, yeah, like a little cat, like a little anime girl. And it's the cutest shit ever. She's got millions of followers. I watch it. It makes my day. Like out of all of the Tourette's you could get, that's the shit you want. I mean, maybe not if you're a big man. Like, could you imagine if, if every 15 seconds I would go, Dude! like that would be much less cute, probably more annoying. But her... It works, right? It's really great. I want to go watch your videos right now. So you want to look at all these girls that are coming in and do they have similar tics? Are they really cute? You know? Because I guarantee you there's, there isn't a single 16-year-old pretty e-girl walking into the doctor's office just dropping the end bomb, right? You don't want that. There's like, that's some, that's some real shit. That Tourette's. You don't want that. There's none of those guys on, on, on TikTok blowing up, are they? 
You know, I saw this one documentary of this guy that just couldn't stop saying it. And he lived in like, uh, <clears throat> I can't remember what area. I watched it when I was a teenager, but he lived in like a quite uh, uh, a diverse area. And he was a white guy. And I watched him like in the supermarket, just hit a stranger with fat, fat and balm, like with the accent. And she was like, oh my God. I thought the guy was going to get fucking murdered, you know? Like, you don't, you're not going to be seeing any of these 16-year-old girls walk into the doctor's office just dropping the N-bomb every 15 seconds. They're all going to be going, mm, yeah, kawaii. Specialists at other major institutions have also reported similar surges. Uh, since March 2020, the Texas Children's Hospital has reported, I mean, they might see a few N-bombs. The Texas one, you know, that they might get a few girls that just want to say it, you know. They're sick of going, shh, when they're mouthing the lyrics. They want Tourette so they can say that shit. I want to rap the full song. Um, Texas Children's Hospital has reported seeing approximately 60 teens with such ticks, whereas doctors saw one or two cases a year before the pandemic. At the Johns Hopkins University Tourette Center, 10 to 20% of pediatric, pediatric patients have described acute onset tick-like behaviors up from 2 or 3% a year before the pandemic. That's interesting. I wonder how much of this is like... Uh, people pretending to have it or self-diagnosing themselves or convincing themselves that they have it, like Munchausen syndrome or hypochondriac. I don't know. I don't know what that's fucking called. And how much of it is just like actual awareness, getting people to get checked and go, oh, fuck, I have always thought it was weird when, when, I, just, when I just start dropping the N-bomb in the supermarket. I thought I was racist. I guess I have Tourette's, you know? See, that, that'd, be a, that'd be a good scapegoat for... Um, Richard Spencer, he goes, sorry, guys, I had Tourette's the whole time. Um, <laughs> uh, that's interesting. But yeah, there seems to be no consensus. It's just an article of like, maybe they're faking. Maybe they're not. I don't know. Uh, DJ Hairs donated another $20 and says, just wondering what do you dislike most as your job as a comedian? What do I dislike most? The fans. No. <laughs> what do I do? I don't know. I dis. I don't like... Um, yes, you may. I'll allow it. Um, I don't... Uh, I would say that it's the stuff that you guys don't see. I don't like uh, all of the fucking admin that I have to do. There's a lot of admin that goes into... This is probably a very boring answer. Because I love, you know, obviously performing. I love writing. Fuck, I even love bombing. Like, I don't... Like, if I go up and I do a joke and it just tanks, you know? Like, like you know, you guys may have seen seen that happen when I was doing the what if being trans was a choice. That could be funny. That kind of bombed, you know? A lot of, a lot of face palm emojis. That, what, that didn't crush, you know? Mixed response at best. I enjoy the bomb because it helps me get better. And I can't wait to try that in an open mic and just get fucking banned for life. Um... The stuff that I don't like is just all of the fucking admin. I don't like liaising with with brand deal people. Like I will do a brand deal and then I will put off sending them an invoice for months, literally. I think ExpressVPN owe me a few thousand dollars. And 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 uh, I'm not angry at them for it. I'm, I'm angry at myself for not having the will to send two emails. I go, oh, you know. It's, it's all the boring paperwork. It's basically what I don't like about being a stand-up comedian is all of the admin that comes with running a business, I suppose. Uh, but hopefully, you know, I can uh, uh, outsource that next year, perhaps, you know, when I stop paying rent here. Um, maybe that'll be a thing. So that's, yeah. I'll allow it. Yep. Oh, guys, welcome to the stream, Keelan's ass. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's what I don't like. What a very, what a boring answer. Oh, is there anything to do with comedy? Like actually doing comedy that I don't like? I don't, uh, man, not really. I just fucking love it. I feel like I'm really blessed to do what I do. I really, really love it. I'm very, very happy and I'm very lucky. Even the shit things that I don't like doing, you know, it's like, it's so much better than the jobs that I used to have. I used to work in call centers and working in the back of butchers. So I'm very, very happy screaming about rats you know, that's my job. I yell about rats and people go, ha funny, wouldn't want to be him. I'll subscribe to his Patreon. Here's 20 bucks. You know, that's the job. In fact, I don't know if you two know this, Keelan and Rosie, but I actually release the rats for content. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they are dealing with the rats much worse than I am, which makes sense considering I release them. Um, 
I, so I thought we would take a, uh, before we get into these emails here, although have, did we hit a thousand? We're up to an hour now. Uh, if we didn't, you guys are poor. 835. 835 guys. Once we get to the, the end of this content, I might end this stream. $200 now. Uh, um, sorry. What? Nothing. Oh, that's right. So I thought that what we could do is take a, take a trip down memory lane and just have a look at some of the old titles of Spearhead Sundays. 250 episodes. There should be over 300, but here we are. Uh, let's have a look at some of the, the titles. I think the, the favorite uh, episode title that I saw, I just scrolled way back and I just had a look, uh, was uh, Spearhead Whenever I Feel Like It. And that was the title. Because it probably would have come out on a fucking Thursday, maybe after I'd been gone for two weeks for no real reason, <laughs> and I just and I just uh, fucking called it Spearhead whenever I feel like it. This is good. Uh, Lesbianese denim vest update. <laughs> this one is a really funny one. Does my rescue dog have a huge dick? Oh yeah, Albert. He's my dog. Albert has a huge cock. <laughs> huge wiener. <laughs> Like I remember me, I remember like three days after we got the dog, cause you know, when you get a new dog, <laughs> we adopted him and he's really nervous and he's like all kind of hunched and just, and just hiding in, in his dog box and not really uh, coming out of his shell. But when he started to come out of his shell, I remember like day, it was like day three or four when he was like walking around and just feeling a little bit more comfortable and, and at home and relaxed. Me and mom just looked at each other and we, and, and I just went, does, does he have a huge cock? And she goes, I was going to say that. He does, because we have a it's two, it's a whippet, right? We got two. We had two whippets at the time, right? Gideon, rest his soul. In all all the old classic Lou reviews, that's the that's the the incredibly skinny dog that looks like me, uh, <laughs> in the background of the first few episodes, right? He was our first whippet. We had him for years, and then we had Albert, and Albert's a little bit bigger in in ev in every way, but is much bigger in in the penis department. So either. <laughs> My original Whippet had a small penis or Albert has a big hog. <laughs> I reckon it might be a little bit of both, you know. But, you know, you know what they say. Dogs look like their owners. <laughs> um, um, another one is legal abortions and sexy teachers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, this one's great. This one, uh, this one, I remember this. This was like a, a really long running multi-episode argument that I had with you guys. And this title really sums it up. Sorry, I'm a seven. Because I remember on a, on a podcast episode, I rated myself a seven out of 10 and the audience was so angry and they were so mad. They were rating me five, six. I've got a few threes, right? And this was this was pre-glow up, right? Uh, but but I, I stand by it. I'm a solid seven. And and my reasoning was, in if I, you know, in... In, if you don't know what I do, and if you and and I would be maybe a five or a six, but because of my my job and my status, that elevates me to a seven, and that's how the world works, baby. Unfortunately, you know, you don't get rated just off based off looks. You get rated off the whole package, and, and I am the whole package. In fact, I would say I'm much more successful than I am than I was then. So now I'm an eight. Suck my dick. What about this one? Episode forty-seven. Fuck Canberra. Throwing chairs at patrons and feeling like a pro. Well, that's good. <laughs> Getting really good at throwing chairs at Patreon supporters. Um, what else do we have? Uh, a terrible interview with Riff Raff. I remember that one. That one's a, a personal favorite episode because there was this, there's this rapper Riff, Riff Raff and he came to Melbourne and I was actually a big fan of him at the time. This is pre-rape allegations. Um, and I was a big fan of him. Uh, actually, this tour is where he committed, or, or allegedly committed uh, the things. Uh, I, I guess when I interviewed him, I got, a, I got away lucky. Um, and I was really excited to meet him and really excited to interview him because I, I knew the guy who booked the tour. And uh, he kept me waiting around for about eight hours and then gave me a six-minute interview before he walked on stage. And it was the worst interview ever. He was so rude, which I wouldn't have been mad at, but then his show was so fucking terrible i see a lot of live shows i see a lot of rap big fan of rap big fan of live performance in general i've seen a lot of shows i have never seen a worse more disrespectful live show than when i saw riff raff perform uh in in melbourne in when was this how long ago was this four years ago so 2015 uh no 17 right around then literally 
the place is half sold out, which is rough, you know, when you're an artist and you don't fill the venue, it hurts your feelings, but you need to go. It's not their fault. They came. I'm going to do a good show for them, right? This is my fault. I didn't promote or I'm not as big as I thought I was, right? So you give a good show for the people. I mean, for fuck's sake, I performed to, to, to 17 people in Gympie in a 150-seat theatre that sold so poorly. Actually, I think it was seven. It wasn't 17. It was like seven. It was something, some, something incredibly ba- embarrassing. And it was a 150-seat room that they just I sold so poorly that the venue set it up for the wedding the next day ahead of time. So I walked in and it said, congratulations, Greg and Marie. And there was like the big like wedding thing and tables and shit. And I walked up, I'm like, where's my show? And they go, oh, your show? Well, that's in the corner there because you only sold seven tickets. And I went, fuck, I did a good show. You know, it was, it was embarrassing, but I did my best, right? The people loved it. One guy was watching this. He gave me some money. Obviously didn't burn him, right? Bill Dogs, $10. He says, Lewis, you're a very cool dude and hope we can meet up when you get around to coming to Sydney. Fuck yeah, Phil. Thank you very much. I'd love to meet you. Absolutely. Thank you for the $10. I will buy myself something nice. Um, so yeah, anyway, so Riff Raff, his song play, his, the, his walk on music plays and he walks on uh, and the crowd's really excited. Like, fuck yeah, Riff Raff. And he does... He raps his song really unenthusiastically. I'm like, oh, maybe he's getting into it. Maybe it's a bit. And no shit, he does five songs. He's there and he's got short songs. He's there for, honestly, max 25 minutes on stage. 25 minutes maximum. The opening acts did longer than he did, right? And then at his fifth song, his song ends. And mind you, he did, at the start of the the show, he did what every artist does walk on to their biggest, most exciting song, don't say hi, just do the performance. And then after that, then you go, Melbourne, what the fuck's going on? So he did the first bit where he walks on and he does his song, but then the song ended and he doesn't say hello. So he hasn't said hello. The DJ just plays the next track and then he does another song, really half-assed. Then the next track, he still hasn't said anything to the crowd. He does that five times in a row. He gets to the end of his fifth song and then... He walks off stage straight away. He literally just turns around exactly like this as soon as the song ends, walks off stage. And I'm like, oh, he's going to do an encore. The entire audience is like, oh, he's doing an encore. This is kind of cool. And then he just doesn't come back. And, the, and, and no one says the show's over. The DJ walks off at the same time, right? No one says the show's done. The audience is going, yeah, woo it's a fake end of the show. You know, when I saw Green Day, they all walked off stage. And everyone's like, ah, you're going to come back and play American Idiot. We know, you're coming back, right? <laughs> and then he just doesn't come back. And I'm sitting on the sidelines and people are looking at me like, is he, is he coming? And I'm like, uh, 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 I, you know? And then eventually, after about 10 minutes, even the fucking sound and lighting guy is confused. After about 10 minutes, he just turns the lights on. And people are like, oh my God, that's actually the end of the show. And people left and dude, people started throwing shit on the stage. You're like, fuck you. Because tickets were like $60. And people got so angry. I've never seen something more disrespectful in my life. I might do it at my next show. (laughs) Imagine if I did that. If I didn't say hello, I told five jokes and then I just turned around and walked away and then the lights went up. You'd be like, oh my God, that's so disrespectful. I'm almost impressed. Um, so that's Riff Raff. That's, that's a personal favorite. And then, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Oh yeah, here we go. Yelling with Jasmine, unsigned, quitting jobs and threesomes. Episode 56. That's a nice little clickbait one. What? Lewis and Jasmine have threesomes? You have to listen to the episode and find out. (laughs) Um, all right. I think now, uh, Dalton with a $15 donation. Oh, thank you, mate. Any just money? Just money. Mate, nothing. that's that's efficient, you know? <laughs> yeah. I got nothing to say. I don't want to say I enjoy the show. I don't want to say well done. I don't even want to say hi, just money. That's great, you know? Thank you. 140 $137 off. Ooh. Okay. All right. We're getting there. We're getting there. Um, so, Let's get into miscellaneous bit at the end. Guys, I have some, I have some, uh, I'm going to do the emails and then after the emails, I have some news. Um, and then uh, that might bring us to the end unless we hit uh, $15,000 and then it'll be a 24-hour live stream. Can I use my computer or do I have to use the phone for the uh, emails? Use the computer, yeah. 
That would be good. Um, so <clears throat> if you don't know, miscellaneous bit at the end is the worst part of the podcast. It's the part where I answer <coughs> your emails. Uh, if you have some, uh, if you have a life advice question, if you have a funny story to tell me, what? <laughs> What's happened? DJ Ayers, the guy who donated before, yeah. says it won't let me send $250, so he sent 200 instead. Oh, thank you so much, dude. What the fuck? That's so nice. That's crazy, bro. Thank you very much. What a fucking king. DJ is. Oh, someone wants me to say two phones. Yeah, how can I forget two? Say it for money. (laughs) Say it. You only say it for $300. This isn't yours. All right, I'll say it for $300. $300 and Lewis will say two phones. Mm -hmm, That's right. (laughs) Um, All right, so if you don't know, thank you very much, DJ is. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Um, if you don't know, Miss Lane's be the end, worst part of the podcast. If you have a life advice question, if you have a funny fuck story to tell me, if you have something, a news article you think would contribute to the show, send an email to podcast at loosebeers.com. Um, so this one we have starting off with a banger subject line. Really like this one. My uncle sent my cousin porn. This is great. <laughs> really good. My uncle sent my cousin porn. <laughs> this is from our neighbor. Um <laughs> Hi, Lewis, Keelan, and Rosie. My subject is not exaggerating. My uncle really did try to send my cousin porn. He's recently divorced, and my aunt was almost definitely cheating on him with her current boyfriend, who happens to have the same name and occupation as her ex-husband. That's fucking messy, isn't it? Someone at my uncle's workplace suggested that they had seen her in a video on a local porn site specifically for videos of affairs. Wow. Wow. Gee, that's brutal, isn't it? Who the fuck is uploading that for real? What was it? Sorry, I was I was modding the chat. What? Um, she said that he goes. This guy was told by a friend they think they saw his wife on a video site, do uh, on a porn site specifically about affairs. Who's I think it's a kink, isn't it? I guess so. Mm. But I didn't know they were real. Like people were actually cheating on their partners and then uploading it. <laughs> like I, I get cheating's awful, but I get people getting off on that. But then getting off on uploading it, I don't know. Risk to re- reward ratio is way off. That shit's fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah that's fucked. Um, all right. So my uncle, being the bird brain alcoholic that he is, saw nothing unlikely about this at all. Oh, and convinced himself that it really was her in the video. Okay, so maybe it wasn't. Okay, I think that's what this person's saying, is that it probably wasn't them, but he's convinced himself that it was her. The other piece of information important for you to know uh, is that my cousin is a hairdresser and cuts or dyes most of the family's hair. Before COVID, she regularly colored my aunt's hair. Because my uncle is a fucking moron, he decided to call her in the middle of the day at work to ask if she could confirm that the woman in the video had the same hairstyle as my aunt at the time. I mean, how would he not know that? Yeah. How would he not know what fucking hairstyle his own wife has? <laughs> I need an expert's opinion on this. <laughs> what the fuck? Understandably, she freaked out at him and said that she started crying and yelling before she hung up. Slightly unrelated <laughs> note, but ironic that she also cheated on her wife. She's gay? That she also cheated on her wife a year ago and then tried to make her own mother tell her wife... Oh, not a typo. There's two hers here. She tried to make her own mother tell her wife that she was no longer welcome in their own house. Jeez, you got a messy family, dude. Anyway, today was Thanksgiving in Canada and we had... Is that a real place? Uh, and (laughs) And we had a family dinner with everyone except for my cousin. Part of me would have vastly preferred my uncle to have not been there, but my dad is afraid that he'll kill himself if we object too much. I try and act normal around him for his daughter's sake because she doesn't uh, know anything that's been happening for the last year and I really care about her. These are just a few of the details, but I don't want to make it go on forever. Fuck, what's this guy leaving out? I was just wondering if you have any specific advice for dealing with insane family members. Thanks for reading. Have a shit one. Uh, Yeah, I uh, I have some advice for you. Stay the fuck away. Move. That's that's my advice. If you have a batshit crazy family and you can't improve the situation, which you can't, by the way, there's, it's very rare that you can fix 
someone else's problem, if they're an individual, if the entire family dynamic is absolutely fucked and your uncle is sending porn to your cousin while his wife cheats on his wife and, and the person he sent porn to is a, is a gay lady cheating on her wife and getting their mum involved to kick out their own wife after they've cheated on them, my number one advice, piece of advice for you is move. Get the fuck out of there and just, just come home for Christmas. But don't stay with them. Get your own accommodation so you can leave at any time you want. That's my advice to you. Get the fuck out. Don't abandon them. Just move far enough away that it's a bitch to come see you. So you're not going to cop daily visits. You don't want to be within 15 minutes of that noise. Three hour drive minimum. That's my advice. Preferably on tolls. (laughs) You know, if you can get yourself on a really good tollway, that would be good. All right. Um, Okay, this is a good one too. This is a banger. Instagram post has involuntary nude. This is a dilemma. Uh, Hey, Lewis, I think it's fair to say that we all stalk Instagram accounts from time to time. Correct. Uh, Well, when you're single at least. Correct. So I was uh, going through the account of this girl that I used to know in high school and there's a post where she's jumping off a cliff And when you swipe across, there's a photo of the bruise it left on the back of her legs and she's lying on her stomach. (laughs) Oof. There is... This is bad. I I actually have a, a similar story to this that I'll tell after. It's even worse. There's a towel around her waist in the lying down photo. Oh, no. But with the brightness all the way up... Oh, you adjusted the brightness, you dog. You know what you were doing. With the brightness up, if you zoom into the corner, you can see that the photo shows a little bit under the towel and you can see her vagina very clearly. Uh, It's one of those things that isn't obvious, but once you notice it, you can't unsee it. I can tell that she didn't notice when she posted it because she never posts anything even slightly revealing and is quite shy, not to mention she has a man. I feel, this is bad, I feel weird for noticing, but but I can't say anything or should I. If I notice, surely every other guy that sees it will notice too. But if, I, but if I bring it up, I'm a creepy perv. But then again, she wouldn't want it up for everyone to see. It's like pointing out broccoli in the teeth, but on a different level. <laughs> that's, that's really, that's a good analogy. Hey, you've got a bit of broccoli in your pussy. Um, on one hand, it's interesting to look at the photo. Oh, come on. On one end, it's interesting to look at that photo like it's just there on her Instagram. I didn't do anything wrong, but it gives you the guilty feeling to look at because she didn't mean to post something that shows her vagina. What are your thoughts on the situation? What do you guys think? What are your... I've never been able to do these with a live audience. What do you guys think? Uh, Also, not going to lie, it looks like she's been using the lawnmower 4.0. It looks shaved clean. Cheers, mate. Yeah, okay. I think... and. You know, let me know if you guys think I'm wrong. I think you tell her. I reckon you tell her even if you don't know her that well. I think you absolutely DM her and you say something like, Hey, Sarah, um, I don't know if you realize... Or you keep it real business. You don't say, I'm sorry. You don't say, I feel weird saying this. You keep it strictly business. You talk to her like she's fucking HR. You go, Hey, Sarah, hope you're well. I'm not sure if you're aware, but this photo, and you link her, you can see your privates. You don't say pussy. You don't say minge. You don't say freshly shaven flaps. Have you been using (laughs) the lawnmower 4.0? You don't say that. You say, hey, Sarah, I uh, just wanted to let you know that in your latest photo, you can actually see inside your cunt. No, you say you can see your privates. Um... And then you just, then then you you hand, you wash your hands and you let her do what she's gonna do, and hope and and she'll see it and she'll take it down and you don't follow up about it. You don't go, hey, it was a good good time while it, while it was there. You say nothing. You just go, hey, don't know if you know, but you can see your privates in this photo. Thought I should let you know. Uh, one good comment from Meg. She says, tell her, but don't say anything about the brightness. Yeah, yeah, don't, no details. Just go, I don't know if you're aware, but you can see your privates. That's all you say. No detail. Don't go, I don't know if you're aware, but I can see your juicy looking pussy. Tongue emoji. Don't say that. Disgusting. Yeah, don't say that. That's disgusting. That was an example of what not to say. (laughs) Really quick. Uh, Also, don't say thank you so much (laughs) for posting your absolutely voluptuous cunt. Don't say that. 
Uh, that nice guy, 81, says, uh, donated $20, said, hey, Lewis, I've been a fan since day one. Thank uh, you, mate. Can't wait to see you at, Mel- at the show in Melbourne and to piss myself. Awesome. Great. Thank you, dude. I can't wait for the shows in Melbourne too. Um, yeah, I think, I think uh, that's what you say, is you just go, hey, not sure if you're aware, but you can see your privates in this photo, and then you wash your hands, right? Because obviously you've been... No, that's disgusting. <laughs> Shame on you. That's disgusting, Keelan. I have, a, I have a similar story and I took action on this and I feel really good about what I did. So this is very important. I was underage at the time, right? This is real bad. I remember... Uh, I'll wait till Keelan comes back to tell the story because it's right, fucked. Fine. I remember, right? This is when I was in high school. I'm also a minor, right? This is very important. Uh, our, my high school used to post... Uh, like photo galleries after every event and school assembly and shit like that. And me and my mates would sometimes go through them because every now and then there'd be a really funny photo, like some kid making a face or like some real ugly person. It was mean-spirited shit. <laughs> like we would go through, we'd find the ugliest person. We'd go, oh, look at this one. Yeah. Right? And uh, I'm like, I think I'm like 15 or 16 at the time. We're going through and it's the year seven orchestra and uh, they're taking photos of all, of all the, uh, the orchestra playing violin and shit. And there's like one photo. And it's obviously unintentional because it's a photo of like 30 kids. <laughs> oh, and there's one girl, one poor girl right at the front. Oh, no. You can see right up her skirt and she's not wearing underwear. And it's a really high quality photo. So we saw it. And we're like, is that what we think it is? We zoom in. We're like, oh, my God. So I was like, fuck, who do we tell? I don't want to tell her because I don't want her to freak out. I don't want to tell too many people. Like, you, you got to be careful which teacher you tell. You don't want to tell the creepy science teacher. Yeah. You don't want to tell him because that, that photo might, uh, might disappear everywhere except for one hard drive. You know, so we were like, fuck, what do we do? So I ended up just emailing the female principal a link to the photo and I said, hi, uh, I was looking through the photos and I saw this. Uh, you probably want to take it down. And, and this is the smartest thing that the principal did. She didn't respond. She didn't say thanks. She didn't say anything. No written confirmation, nothing. I just checked the next day, photo was gone. And I was like, thank God. So that's, that, and I really am glad that I did that because, you know, you don't know who's looking at that shit. So I'm happy I did that. That's good. And, and, and I think maybe they've learned that, hey, maybe when we get the year seven girls fucking violin orchestra to sit to uh perform on the stage maybe we don't have the photographer standing and shooting up like that maybe that's a recipe for disaster you know that's like bad call on the photographer's part don't stand there bro uh you got a a few big donations oh wow lenzo media 30 dollars just says bluis oh Uh, no never again i'm never going blue but thank you but fuck you no (laughs) Zan Penguin, $50, says, been a good show, can't wait. i got to say, you might be able to do international shows before Melbourne. And then <laughs> yes, that's actually true. That makes me upset. That's $10. actually true. Thank you, mate. $10, this one's good. G'day, fellas. Love hearing about voluptuous cunts on Instagram <laughs> while cooking carbonara. Keep it up. Yeah, great. Cool. See, you're not going to get that anywhere else. How many people are watching? Uh, 511. Oh, wow. We're going up. This is good. They're, they're, you know, stay for the rants. Uh, no, come for the rants. Stay for the voluptuous cunt chat. Um, all right. So now we've got one more email and then we're going to end on we have two more emails, then we're going we're gonna to end on a follow-up from, uh, from an email that, uh, that's, that's been going back and forth. We've got a bit of a saga on the show, and I think we're going to be wrapping it up today. Um, so, this one. I got the bomb squad called on my high school. This is great. G'day, cunt. After hearing you were desperate for stories, I thought I might as well send a story about the time I got the bomb squad called on my school for a dumb reason. My name is Josh, and this happened in a small coastal town in northern New South Wales. During year 10, the school started asking everyone to bring in iPads and laptops for school, which my parents thought was bullshit, but I was stoked to force my destitute parents to buy me an iPad. I remember that. My school bought everyone laptops, and then we were the first year to get technology. Like, that 2012, that's when they were like, all right, Let's use laptops in school. Like we were pre-iPad, pre right? We had laptops and the school 
good on them, bought everyone a laptop and then quickly realized that giving a bunch of 17, 18 year old boys a laptop, you're just giving them a porn machine, right? That's all they were used for. All of the laptops were supposed to be returned in working order. Let me tell you, none of those keyboards clicked the same at the end of that year. No click clack, more of a squelch. Um, so uh, all my parents could afford was one of those shitty tablets from Aldi that were like $99. Oh, you got the Aldi tablet. It was a seemingly normal uh, day during lunch break and I was sitting and eating with all of my friends at our usual spot. My poverty stricken friend was having trouble with his tablet. Oh no. Anyway, I, I had a friend that was dirt poor, like Kenny from South Park poor. Okay. So he got the iPad. You got the iPad. Your, your friend Kenny got the Aldi tablet. Gee, that's rough, isn't it? Yeah. You can't tell you can't just spring on parents. They need to buy like a thousand dollar piece of equipment. That's not fair. Um, so Kenny got the Aldi tablet. It was a seemingly normal day during lunch break and I was sitting and eating with all my friends at our usual spot. My poverty freaking stricken friend, my poverty freaking friend was having trouble with his tablet. So he asked me to have a look at it for him as I am quite tech savvy. Basically, I told him that it's so slow because it's cheap and nasty and there's nothing you can do about it. He got really mad, snatched it out of my hand and pegged it at the concrete as hard as he could, smashing it into a million pieces. We all pissed ourselves last at laughing. Then I noticed that the battery flew out and landed at my feet. So I thought it would be funny to stab the battery with a pair of scissors that I stole from a year seven kid to see if it would catch on fire or something. Yeah, that's great. It not only caught on fire, but started smoking a lot. So much so that we freaked out and threw it away so it wouldn't be spotted by a patrolling teacher. That's uh, dangerous shit. The smoke wasn't going away, but getting a lot worse and worse. Eventually, this started gathering the atten attention from the other students scattered around the school. Five minutes passed by, and there's almost 100 people all standing around this smoking battery. Eventually, oh. there were several teachers frantically trying to do something to control the situation, so they called the head teacher of science to come have a look. Science. Call the science teacher, and he's like, oh, why do I have to look at batteries? I'm scrolling through the, the this year seven orchestra pictures. I'm busy. Um, he arrived wearing a full hazmat suit and a huge pair of tongs. The head teacher grabbed the battery with his tongs and walked it over to the car park where a van full of suited up police met him and took the battery from him. Inevitably, this was brought up at the next school assembly where they asked if anyone had any information and that they should come forward. <laughs> so I went to the principal's office after assembly and handed myself in. I was given a week of afternoon detentions and a suspension warning. That's awesome. You got the bomb squad called? That's great. <laughs> the only time we had one of those was we, we went on, me and, me and my friends went on, on like a rampage of vandalism, smashing cars, lighting fires, <laughs> demolishing letterboxes all the way home from a, from a house party. It was like 15 of us just smashing everything, bins on the road, boys jumping on roofs of cars, off the roof, onto the rear, rear vision mirror. Real just like crime, petty crime rampage. Real fun. Some of the most fun I've ever had in my life. I always think about how fun it was and I wish I could do it again. Uh, but don't, crime's bad. Uh, and then we ended up having a meeting with a police officer and the principal and 15 of us. And they said, we, all, we know that all of you were either around it, saw it, or involved. Who did what? And none of us snitched. No one said nothing. And we all got two Saturday detentions and it was great. Say nothing. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have snitched on yourself, bro. Would have been fine. If they're doing the, the school assembly thing, they got nothing. All right. So final email and then I have some news and then we'll end the show. This is a, a follow-up to a saga and uh, I'll start with the original email. So this is an email. This guy asked me for advice. Um, we have 550 people watching. 550 people watching for the, the, the uh, I guess, the incel saga. So this, this is the original email. Some of you will be familiar with it, uh, but I'll read it again because we have a follow-up. <clears throat> Found out that my partner is not a virgin and it bothers me. Advice. Um, a little context. I'm currently dating a lifelong friend of mine. We started dating earlier in the year after not being in contact for a while. Turns out they had a crush on me back in school and I was too dumb to realize. One thing that I've always believed in is saving sex until marriage. 
This is more than just a religious thing. It's just something I've felt firmly about for reasons that I'm not sure of. This has made finding a partner stressful to me because I wasn't sure how I could be able to find someone whose beliefs aligned with mine after I left my Christian high school. Since then, I've had one relationship with a Christian girl and we never had sex, but we did round the other bases a few time, times. The new relationship has been similar. My current partner does not have the same beliefs as me, but they are somewhat asexual and have made it clear that they're not interested in sex currently and are scared of getting pregnant. This works for me for now, as we've agreed that sex after marriage would be fine. Now, here's the problem. At the beginning of our relationship, my partner told me that they had sucked off a couple of guys for cash at the end of high school. I couldn't really fault her, uh, since they were chasing the bag. Uh, but the other day, I mean, I, you know, I just do a stream and I'll go, give me a grand and I'll do an extra 20 minutes. You know, that's that's how I chase the bag. You know, I mean, give me a grand and I'll suck your cock. Let's see what happens. Um, now, I don't know what to do. Uh, this came as a shock to me, especially because I thought they'd already... Uh, They'd already told me everything. Now I don't know what to do because I feel this terrible feeling inside whenever I think about it and sometimes it causes me physical pain. Ah, my girlfriend sucks cock for cash, my arm. Um, Part of it is uh, that putting my beliefs aside, they would not be willing to have sex with me, but I wouldn't be there first. I also thought that we could share the experience one day, but now it won't be the same. I love my partner, and I know that logically this should not change anything, but I don't know if this feeling, these feelings are going away with time or not. I don't really have anyone in my life that I feel comfortable talking about this. I could use some advice, but understand if you don't want to touch this or think I'm a piece of trash. Um, and he said, P.S. I once literally had a girl begging to have sex with me, but I declined. Uh, so I can safely say that I'm not an incel. I just have different beliefs. So my original advice to this guy was, uh, one, you need to figure out why you think sex, no sex till marriage is a good thing. Because he's like, I don't really know why I believe that. I'm like, well, you need to figure out why you believe it so that you can be sure that you believe it. That's what I said. And then I also said that I'm not sure if this relationship is going to work because she doesn't want sex at all and you're going to be really excited for sex come marriage day. Whether, whereas if she's truly asexual and she has no interest in sex, you're going to be stoked and she's going to be like, oh, fuck, I have to do this. It's going to be a chore and you'll be like, oh, I waited for so long for someone who doesn't want to do it at all. It'll be a big disappointment. That was basically my advice was, I'm not sure if these two views are going to work out. Maybe you should either let the waiting for marriage thing go or find someone who is also waiting for marriage rather than doesn't want to do it at all other than for money, basically is what I said, which I thought was sound advice. And this is the follow-up. I haven't read this on the show. This is the, uh, I assume the last email. Um, Follow-up to non-virgin partner. The plot thickens. All right. (laughs) You know what else is thick? Hello again, Lewis. Congratulations on 250 episodes. To start, I'll clarify a few things from my previous email. I said that my beliefs are more than just religious and I didn't know exactly why I had them. But really, I meant that I believe that some things aren't specifically Christian, like not drinking and not swearing, so it's hard to say where exactly my beliefs come from. Yeah, I mean, I don't drink, but I don't consider myself a Christian, so I get that. I think it may have just been the way I was raised and my parents aren't Christian. I also want to clarify that my partner is not completely asexual. Okay. They're just not keen on some aspects of sex at this point in time and have a fear of getting pregnant this young. Uh, Has she heard of condoms? Um, But no, okay, I get that. It should also be stated that they were going through a rough time back in school when they had sex, et cetera, and have changed a fair bit since then. Okay, cool. So that's more context. Uh, Your girl was uh, going through a rough time and she's not completely asexual. So, you know, maybe I'll reverse this. If you can let go of the, ah, I hate that she's not a virgin, maybe it'll work. Um, I was able to come to terms with the situation after writing in last time. Okay, so he has. I think I just needed to vent to someone, so thanks for facilitating that. No worries. Have a vent. Podcast at loosebeers.com. But the real reason I'm writing... Oh, okay. The real reason I'm writing in is because there's been a new development in the relationship. We haven't had a chance to spend much time together since the last bombshell dropped due to work and uni, but we've been talking a lot through Snapchat and Messenger, etc. Last Tuesday, after saying goodnight, uh, they sent another message... 
that said, also, I'm a boy. Oh, what? also, I'm a boy. And then they didn't respond until the next day. Turns out he's trans and has been for years, but never told anyone. Oh my God, this episode's coming full circle. <laughs> Imagine if he was doing it for a laugh. <laughs> I can't really talk to anyone I know about this because I'm the only one who knows. He seemed somewhat open to the idea of having kids in the future. Oh, dude, that's what Apple's emoji's for. Dude, go for it. They've got a male, uh, a male, oh, pregnant male emoji cool. now. Yeah. You know, this emoji was made for you boys. <laughs> um, he seems somewhat open to the idea of having kids in the future when we talked about it earlier in the year, but this makes me think my odds of convincing him are slim. Uh, oh, well, I guess I'm gay now. <laughs> I'll be seeing him in person this weekend, so hopefully we'll be able to straighten things out and figure out our future. P.S. I saw your super horny Brisbane show and loved it. I can't wait for Gimfest. Man. I guess I'm gay now. He's trans. That's really interesting. I mean, I guess that's fine. If you're fine with it, that's fine. But what is interesting is like, I think, is this camera plugged in? It's flashing. Does that mean it's going to be full? Um, I don't know what to say. I don't have any experience with this. What do you guys think? I personally, if, if one day my girl turned around and was like, hey, I really hate when you call me your girl, I would like to be your boy. I don't think I could do it. Not, not really because uh, I wouldn't, love him i just don't think i would be happy uh with because i'm just trying to imagine my girl with chest hair you know like i don't i couldn't i couldn't get into it you know i reckon i could i reckon because that's what the testosterone does they're gonna get like imagine your boy with chest hair and if you're cool with that like if you want to run your hands through some some like hairy titties Go for it. I couldn't do it, but all power to you. Gee, this guy's, I really believe him when he goes, oh, it's, it's not really a Christian thing. You know, after this, I really believe him. That's, I, dude, I don't know. Good on you boys. Geez, it'd be a bit of fun though, wouldn't it? Like how fucking gnarly is that? Uh, is, is this guy gay though? That's an interesting thing. Because like, if you're with someone who you who you believe is a woman or or both of you agreed that they were a woman or they were presenting as a woman jeez this is dodgy territory isn't it and then and then they go actually I'm a bloke and then they get chest hair and and start putting their hat on backwards and start just like shotgunning cans of VB are you gay I guess you have to, are you, are you bisexual? And that's maybe what you need to ask yourself is, are you bisexual? Because I reckon I could still be with my girl if, if we said he was a bloke, but he didn't look like one. If they didn't like go through the hormones and the transition and get the hairy chest, I'd be down, you know? I'd be down to, 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 um, to date my boyfriend, Jack, you know? As long as they still look like my former girlfriend, Jazz. I could do that. I could switch the pronouns. I couldn't. I'm not sure if I could deal with the broad shoulders, you know, and the puberty and the beard and the chest hair. So I guess that's what you need to you need to ask yourself is obviously I love this man right now, but am I going to love this this bloke when he's benching 150? You know? Like when he starts hitting the gym and like benching 150, like when his one rep max is like 180. And he's like jumping off cliffs and shotgunning VB and doing burnouts. Am I going to still love this 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 true blue Aussie cobber? And I guess and if if the answer is yes, then go for it. You know, live out that pregnant emoji dream. Go for it. I don't know what does what does chat think? What do they reckon? Chat uh, <laughs> saying a lot of uh, homophobic stuff. Um, oh, great, good. Depends if they have hair there. I love carpet. Um, yeah, I reckon it hit the the chest hair is a big issue for me. You know, I don't, I couldn't get around that. My partner was female and transitioned to non-binary, and it honestly changed nothing. That's just me, though. Yeah, but I feel like non-binary is not not that big of a change. 
non-binary, at least from the non-binary people that I've met, I have a few like like people on. I've got a lot of people that are like trans or but non-binary that do come to my shows. I guess because I'm also a bit of like an independent person. Um, and the non-binary people, I could I could do that because it's not it's not a giant physical change, you know. It's more of a pronoun, and then and then they'll shave their head. Like I don't see like non-binary is like oh sometimes they'll dress like a like uh, masculine, sometimes they'll dress feminine. It's like you know neither neither here nor there. So maybe on Tuesday I wouldn't want to fuck them, but on Friday I'll be stoked. I just feel like the, the if they go on full trans and they're doing and they're doing the hormones thing, you got to be real certain that you love him, because you don't because what you wouldn't want to do is go yeah I can handle that, and then as they go through the transition you're like oh no yeah. oh no you know like you don't want you don't want to be pounding pounding your 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 man from behind one day and then see see a bit of back hair and go oh this isn't good. You know, by then it's too late. So I would, I would imagine your boyfriend with chest hair and go, is this still doable? That's what I think. All right. Um, and if not, break up with him now, gently and nicely and go, I'm happy for you. I'll support you. But bye. Sorry. I guess. I don't know. I feel like it, that that would be very brutal for them to hear, but it would be even worse to string them along and become less and less attracted to them as they transition. That's worse, probably. I don't know. I don't have any experience with that. That's my opinion. Um, all right. So finally, uh, I guess this is where we're going to wrap up the stream. We'll be going for like almost two hours here. Um, I guess what we're going to wrap up this is I have some very exciting uh, news, I guess. Um, this is something that <clears throat> I'm starting to lose my voice. I definitely have to end this stream. This is something that uh, happened six, six months ago uh, and uh, I've had to keep it a secret. Um, and I haven't t spoken about it anywhere. The Patreon supporters know this actually. Um, and uh, I think it's appropriate to talk about it for the first time on my podcast because I feel like Spearhead Sundays is a very special thing that I've had with my audience over the last, yeah, like four years in the sense that it's this, this podcast is like, it's, it's a podcast and I try to make it entertaining and funny, but also it's like a diary. It's like, uh, it like, it's a track on me and my life and where it's going and my career and my, my hopes and my dreams and my good times and my bad times. Like I, I try to keep it very, very honest uh, and open with you. Like I remember, you know, the first 50 episodes of the show, you can go and listen to them. I think I still have a job. Yeah. I have like a job. Uh, in episode three, I think you quit your job. That's right. Yeah, so like I quit. I quit my job on the on this show, and I went full time. I went from a from a kid, broke kid with a dream, to a broke comedian with no job uh, on on the show. And you guys saw me go from not selling any tickets to uh, doing like small tours and uh, selling seventeen tickets in Brisbane, uh, quitting my call center job, and then doing lots of tours and. Uh, you know, going from like an open mica that was pretty average to like, you know, now where I think that I'm very good at what I do. And you guys have seen me start and reach to where I am now. I mean, even the, you guys were there for the crowd fund, my first ever comedy special, which is like one of the most special moments in my life. You guys are through everything from me fucking getting my first warehouse to hiring my first uh, member of the team, Keelan, um, and going full time and, and being able to, to pay him and, and pay myself. And you saw me go from paying myself. Like, I think I started on like a hundred dollars a week to like, then going to $200 a week. I was paying myself, uh, like, which was jeans money. Uh, and then going to $300 a week, which was jeans money. 200 was t-shirt money. I think hundred dollars was food money. And then $200 was t-shirt money where I could buy food and then every now and then I could buy a t-shirt and do some things. And then $300, I believe, with jeans money a week. And then now I'm at $400 a week, which is jacket money. Every now and then I can buy myself a nice jacket. Got myself this jacket quite, you know, recently. 
a few months ago, I got this jacket with my jacket money, right? So that's where I'm at. Uh, and you guys have kind of seen me every step of the way um, and you've seen everything and you guys have been my like core supporters. And for that, I'm very, very thankful because this is my dream and it's been my dream since I was like literally fucking 12. The first time I ever saw comedy, I was 12 years old. My mom took me to see Lano and Woodley and it was their farewell tour. And I looked at their show and I loved it, but I looked at not only their show, I noticed the connection that they had between them and their audience because it was their final show and people were so happy for them and so sad and they stood up and I, and I, it, was, it wasn't even the, the show. It was like, I want that. I want that connection. And that's what I have now. And uh, I'm get, almost getting a little bit emotional saying this, but this year, this year I bought my first house um, with comedy. Uh, I bought a house. I'm a homeowner. It happened six months ago. Settlement was uh, in September. And it's one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do in my life. But I did it. And I did it with you, basically, because of you. Because uh, you guys have been my, you know, sole source of income for the last, uh, since I quit, since the, when the podcast started, since episode three. I've been full-time feeding myself, paying my bills, uh, and doing, living my dream ever since episode three for 247 episodes, should be about 300, but still, I've been doing this and it's because of you guys and your support. And now I'm a homeowner. I didn't come from money. I, I didn't, never really had that. I, did, I wasn't like destitute or poor or anything. I didn't grow up in the slums, but you know, I've, I've never, never, never thought that at 27 I would be like a homeowner. So uh, I wanted to say that I'm so truly truly grateful to you guys um and to anyone watching this chase your dream and i want to say thank you so much to you and thank you so much to everyone who's helped me get there especially to keelan um as well and rosie who's just come on board and fucking every single person that i've worked with there is literally too many people my girl especially as well i'm really grateful and i'm and and i've i've bought a fucking house man it's incredible um and it's the perfect place too. I haven't even, I haven't seen it. I've inspected it, but I haven't seen it when it's empty, which is kind of bittersweet. We moved, Jazz has moved in uh, a couple of weeks ago and uh, it's, the, it's the perfect house to kind of build my business and build what I'm doing. It's got like its own detached space. Uh, it's got a perfect place to build a studio. We're rigging up the entire thing with really good internet um, and we're building like a proper like film production studio to just pump out content and have multiple people doing my doing my content and helping me put out stand up and videos and all that kind of stuff and it's uh it's really great um and uh and and the number one thing that i've learned i suppose from since you know achieving this massive thing and buying the house is that the liberal party has some really good ideas <laughs> and i think that you know, something about the Liberals ever since I bought that house, I've been starting to think like these Labour and Greens guys don't know what they're doing. The tax rates are too high. <laughs> these poor people are just trying to get handouts. And, and, and quite frankly, as a homeowner, I'm concerned with where this country's going, you know. And, when, and you know, I, one of the most important things in my life is my mate Frank. You know Frank. Frank who? Franking credits. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's obviously a joke. That's obviously a joke. I support One Nation. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, thank you so much. I really, um, I'm very, very happy and I'm very, very lucky and I'm very, very grateful. And it's because of you guys that I can live my dream. Like, you know, I, I, I'm just doing what I think is funny um, and I'm living... I'm doing exactly what I want to do. I mean, I don't want to be living with rats. I'm doing almost exactly what I want to do. So thank you so much. And um, I appreciate it. All right. So I think I'm going to end it there. Uh, that's episode 250. I'll see you guys next Sunday. Next Sunday, we have Greeley's episode. It's already recorded. It's really, really good. Um, and it's coming out soon. And uh, I love you. And thank you so much for my life. Because it is you guys. I'm gonna go before I cry. Oh, oh before you go, someone just donated fifty dollars. Oh, that's a f that's that's a few dollars off the mortgage. Um, Ripley sent ten dollars. Thank few you so much. People are just sending. I've been a fan since episode thirty. It's been amazing to watch you grow wow. over the years. 
Uh, congrats on the house. And someone sent you some money before. Said, let's get started on this mortgage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's do that. Um, I'd also like to thank Ethereum. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you guys. Let's do another 50 episodes. I'll see you in episode 300. Maybe we can do something actual, actually live in, and in person. So yeah, thank you very much. Goodbye.